Yeah. All right. So, uh, good evening, uh, good morning, depending on where you are uh, on, on your part of, your, of the world. Uh, my name is Eric Bouteillet. Uh, I'm very happy to have uh, you here on behalf of the uh, life science and healthcare uh, uh, practice of uh, uh, Cornerstone. Uh, you know now us quite well. We are very happy to provide this uh, platform to exchange on. Uh, uh, very uh, acute uh, issues uh, and of course to have a debate uh, within our uh, uh, network. Uh, we have a lot of uh, partners of uh, Cornerstone with us tonight, but also some, uh, some customers and some uh, industry experts. So uh, welcome to everybody. We're very pleased uh, you are uh, uh, with us uh, tonight. It's an interactive, uh, interactive uh, session. So uh, after our two distinguished speakers, we will have uh, plenty of time for, for exchange. So please do send us uh, questions or comments uh, through the chat uh, system. As we are a lot of people, it will be uh, the best way to communicate. Huh? Send uh, your questions and uh, uh, comments by, uh, by, by, the, by, the, by the chat. So without further ado, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, uh, launch this, uh, this session. Uh, we have uh, uh, first two uh, experts uh, with us. First, uh, uh, Professor Dimitri Labillette from the Institut Pasteur, which is a very famous uh, organization in research. He's uh, uh, teaching and researching here uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Shanghai. He will uh, help us to uh, look at uh, the different vaccine solutions available uh, worldwide and uh, will give us a focus on variants and reported side effects as uh, vaccination campaign has started. Now we have, uh, I would say, real life uh, vaccine and we can probably learn uh, a few things from, from there. Then it will be followed by uh, Dr. Richard Jones, uh, who is uh, practicing uh, uh, doctor uh, in, uh, in Jakarta, in Indonesia and is also the regional director for all Southeast Asia uh, of uh, international SOS, uh, who has helped us also uh, today to, uh, to, um, to uh, build this, uh, this, this session. He will uh, focus more on the operational and communication challenges that company face uh, in preparing for COVID-19, as we are now going to get, uh, I would say, commercial uh, solutions. So before we start, I just would like to uh, uh, share uh, my, my point of view and my point of view as a former manufacturer. I, I spent 20 years in the uh, pharmaceutical industry and now uh, teaching at uh, CIBS and of course uh, being an advisor for uh, Cornerstone uh, International. I always feel very proud to work for this uh, industry, the pharmaceutical and vaccine uh, industry, because you probably have seen that in a little bit uh, more than one year, uh, we have around the world several solutions that are available uh, to uh, save the life and, uh, and, and stop this uh, pandemic, which is an amazing uh, result. And of course, of course, we, we all know that uh, we have sometimes some difficulties. We have here and there uh, tensions and uh, politics does not always help and, and, and uh, pharma and vaccine business are sometimes uh, not seen uh, very positively by, by some people. But please look at the big picture. Uh, from a, a science and uh, industry and manufacturing point of view, I think uh, something huge uh, has happened uh, facing this huge uh, pandemic. So as I said, now we are in real life. Uh, three months ago, we were thinking, we were hoping about it, and now for three months, we have already a uh, vaccine. So uh, let us uh, see uh, what is the uh, uh, real uh, picture today. Dimitri, if I may use uh, your first name, uh, can you uh, yeah. tell us where we are now on uh, this vaccine and maybe also uh, uh, present yourself a little bit more in detail for, uh, for our participants? Okay. Dimitri, please. Okay, um, I would like to try to share my screen. Um, yeah, so hello, hello everybody. So uh, thank you, Eric, for the invitation first. And, um, to, to have this opportunity to, to present some review about the vaccine strategy that has been developed, uh, as mentioned, Eric, very, very fast in less than one year. Uh, we have now not only one virus vaccine ready, but more than one. So it's quite unique in the vaccine field as well. 
Um, so I'm working in a Pasteur Shanghai, Institute Pasteur Shanghai, that also is a part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, and I used to work on emerging virus like chikungunya and Zika, but I had some skills also on SARS. So when SARS arrived, I just jumped on SARS and, and in our lab, we developed some vaccine or also antibody strategy against SARS uh, virus. So I would just briefly try to put back um, all the fights we face against COVID-19 to really make you understand that it is a unique situation that we face in our life. Maybe I hope that for our generation, it will be the unique uh, fight we need to do, uh, even if we have more and more emerging virus every, every more, more frequently. Um, so as you know, this now we have like, um, 100 more than 100 million cases reported and this is also a big achievement because here it's not only speculation but it's usually also most of the time confirmed cases so meaning that people did diagnose really these people and get results so it's also a huge achievement in terms of diagnostic uh, usually when you talk about flu there is many speculation and mathematical calculation to I have an idea of how many people were infected, but in this case, we have really confirmed cases. So it's a huge number of cases. And we have more than 2.6 million deaths. So if we put this in the context of the global deaths every year, and we say that crime usually is around 600 deaths, road is maybe half of what we have, um, have deaths. Mosquito disease like malaria or dengue or different mosquito transmitted disease is around 800,000 deaths a year. So in the range of around 2 million point six deaths like SARS, I would say it's close to lung cancer people that die every year. And if we compare to flu, because many people, so as it is a respiratory disease, we can compare to flu, uh, I would say in the worst case scenario, usually when it is a bad year for flu, we have around 700 people dying. So we are for now, like four times almost more deaths than the worst year of flu. So this is really a unique situation and mainly because most of us are immune and naive, in fact. So nobody has real defense against this new virus. Uh, with flu, with years, now the population and the world get a little immunity. So every time you need to have a really big mutation in flu to have a big outbreak. So here the situation is very unique. So if we look more in case, I selected a few countries, so don't feel uh, offended, I think, uh, but I wanted to try to give examples of how many people in the different country was infected. So in the United States, uh, approximately 8.5 people have been vaccinated. In UK, it's 6.3. And in, in, as you say, in India, it's less than 1% people vaccinated. So I just want to stress this data because some people were quite, if we think about um, in immunity, global immunity, we are from the herd immunity is far from being rich just by infected people. So we really, really need a vaccine and a, a huge vaccine strategy to, to calm down this outbreak. Uh, in terms of deaths uh, in USA, we say the number of deaths is like, is as if you, you just erase from the map a city like Sacramento or Miami. Uh, in UK, it would be more uh, a city like a thing. So it's really, it's really quite scary to, to see this number. Um, if we look in terms of vaccine, because we will talk mainly about vaccine today, uh, this is a, a cartoon that, that I took on, on the internet. And you can see that Israel reached almost 100% uh, vaccine, vaccination of its population now, uh, followed by the United Arab Emirates. And now, very, very far, you have UK, um, United States, and Chile. And Europe is very, very far. Less than 10% of the population get vaccinated. So we still have a long, long way to go, even if we already can be very proud of all the, all the work that has been done already. Um, just a quick, um, quick, some quick summary about the, the disease, I would say, and the, the vaccine strategy. So I will try not to, to, to worry to you too much. Uh, this is basic science. I'm a basic scientist. So just to explain to you that when the virus infects your body, it will infect most, mostly the upper respiratory tract and then go to the lung. 
Um, this is when usually when you diagnose, there is a good replication of the virus on the upper respiratory tract, so you can diagnose. This can also explain that you lose the smell sometimes, um, but finally it will go to the lug, and this is where it will destroy the lug and make a lot of uh, problem, respiratory problem, beside um, going in the circulation. So how a virus will enter? Usually we have like we see like well, like a key on the border of this virus on the membrane we call it. and this is a spike so we, we will talk a lot about this spike because this is mainly the target of the antibody and this is what vaccine use so this spike in fact is like a key and this key will meet some receptor to enter in the cell so the receptor is, is known it's se2 and it's very it's very involved in the regulation of the blood, blood pressure. So this is why we have also a lot of problem about blood regulation and, and heart disease um, with, with SARS. So when the virus enters the cell, it hijacks your cell to make more and more virus. Okay. So the, the strategy, I would say, would be easy to, to try to inhibit entry. So when it enters the body, there will be some immune system, hopefully. And I want on this scheme just quickly stress that we have different arm in this immune system. So of course, everybody know antibody. We, we talk a lot about antibody, but we should not forget that there is different arm and there is some arm that we call T cell, for example, that is also very important. And usually T cell is very, very stable. And there is a recent study two weeks ago that really demonstrated that the T cell um, generated by vaccine and also by first um, infection by SARS-2 really still protect very well against all the different mutant and variants we have in the world. So the T cell for all the mutation for so far are not affected and it still work very well but the B cell might not work. So it's just to stress that it's not because some people will claim, oh, the antibody are not working so well that your body cannot defend so well. So we need really to understand this and put this in the context of the whole immune uh, response. So how does the vaccine work? I will say the, the immune system work in the, same, the, the way to inhibit entry by generating antibody. And this antibody, we just bind on the spike, so on the key, and prevent the key to enter the, the, the door. Okay, so this is how it works. And usually when you do this, you have antibody not only against the part of the spike that will bind the receptor, but you will have also antibody in every part. So again, it's not because you have one mutation here, like it is described for UK strain or for different strains. So it might abolish the binding of one or two antibody or different antibody, but it might not abolish the binding on all antibody. So that is why also uh, sometimes some variant might start to escape, but they cannot escape completely all antibody. So we can be optimistic and still that even if the protection is not as high as 90%, 100%, it still be around 60, 70%. And it might already help a lot to, to reduce um, the burden of the outbreak. So how does the vaccine work? The vaccine strategy is, to, is based on immune memory, like a training, okay? So it's all the same principle. It's elicit a response from the immune system that teach how to recognize a virus against which it is designed. So when you do a vaccination, you will develop some antibodies. So here you have different antibodies. So we call it IgM, IgG. So IgM has the fastest antibody to arrive and then it switched to IgG. And usually you fight disease with IgG. And then after you will have a boost and then you will produce even more antibody. So now, as you know, there is some vaccines that will have one or two injection only. So you have to imagine that when you will have infection potentially, then your body will be able to, to respond very strongly and very fast to the infection, to the real virus. So this is how we want to prepare the body with it, using a vaccine to answer faster and stronger against the virus that it will not damage your tissue. Um, so as you need to develop this, this vaccine, I would say it takes a lot of time and Eric already mentioned this, and this is really a huge achievement. So here 
on, on the bottom, you will have coronavirus, and you see that here, the, the scale is one year, okay, one year. In one year, we're able to develop vaccine. But for all the previous vaccine already developed, you can see that it, it, it took some time, uh, 60, 40, 20 years, I will say, and for the latest, probably around 10 years, easily seven years a year for flu, swine flu. So really, we are in the range of many years to have vaccine. And in this time, for this time, it was only one year to go to the market. So it's really amazing. So what was the strategy that has been taken by the different company? Uh, I will try to divide this strategy by, I will say, the traditional vaccine. And for this, it's like the whole virus inactivated. So you just amplify the virus and then you, you inactivate it and then you can inject it to people. It will not arm them, but it will train them to recognize this, this spike. Okay. We have some protein-based vaccines that are not yet uh, all on the market, but there are many phase three uh, now, like um, Novavax, um, that are almost on the market. So it's protein-based vaccine. It's like, I would say, the modern vaccine, like HBV vaccine is based on the protein vaccine, okay? We have the virus vector, and most of the vaccine currently on the market are adeno, and I will characterize them as a more modern vaccine strategy. Uh, it is very interesting because all this vector has been developed for other purposes in science, like gene therapy, like TCART technology. So all this vector was really well already prepared. We, we have a lot of um, background on this. And so we just adapted them to a vaccine strategy. So it was in the air. In the lab, we were already doing a lot of vaccine using this. But now it's real and it's go to human for the first time for most of them. And we had the futuristic vaccine. And this futuristic vaccine are amazing because it was really on the pipeline, but really at early stage. It was in the pipeline for other strategy to express protein, uh, but not really for vaccine. And with this SARS-2, we just gain a lot of fear. I usually, I take the example that usually this kind of vaccine, at least my parents, should never have met this vaccine in their life. And finally, we are now using this vaccine to vaccinate people over 64, uh, 65, 70. So this kind of person should have never heard about this arm RNA vaccine in their life. And finally, they will be the first people to benefit from it. So it's really ama amazing what's, what's happened. So usually, I would say the, the modern and traditional vaccine are usually made in a factory. You make it a lot, and then you make in a needle, you inject them, and then they will directly stimulate your immune system. But the new modern and futuristic vaccine use you as a factory as a bioincubator. So they hijack, in fact, your, the, your cell. So what you do is just you take part of the genetic materials of the virus, you put it in a, in a shuttle, and then you inject to the cell. And then the cell will produce the protein, and this protein will stimulate your immune response. So this is very big achievement, because here in a lab, it's very easy to have a standard for DNA or RNA. It's very easy to make. And you don't need so, um, I would say, the, the quality control is probably much higher than all these traditional vaccines because you don't use cell, you don't use media so that you cannot control the composition. You just use DNA or RNA component and some enzyme. And so it's much easier also to control. And so the production is very robust. The quality control is robust. So it's a big, big achievement and it seems to work amazingly well. So today we have like 20, 21 candidates reach the final st stage. Uh, we have six approved, uh, six authorized for early or limited use. Um, we have, and we have 21 still vaccine in a phase three. So meaning that maybe in a few months we can have around like more than 30 vaccine for one disease. And Eric also mentioned it already, and it is really amazing because usually when you have a vaccine, you will have maybe one or two vaccines from one or two companies. I know from, from Japanese encephalitis virus, for example, maybe you have only three companies that will make the Japanese encephalitis virus. Um, so it, it's very unique also in this, in this, um, in this aspect. Um, so the, maybe you know it very well, but I just want to go through. So you have different phase and different 
of clinical trial. Uh, you have the safety trials with a small number of people, then the phase two, usually with hundreds of people, and the phase three that usually need around 30,000 people to 60,000 people. And this is where you can really try to have an estimation of the side effects, in fact. And then you have approval uh, by different agencies. So I, so I, I took this picture uh, from a, a website, COVID Minute, and because it makes a good synthesis of what is available now. Um, so you have different strategies. So of course, mRNA vaccine was the first approved. Um, just to mention that uh, Pfizer, to remind you, Pfizer was accepted the 23rd of December and Moderna was accepted the 6th of January, meaning, yeah, between two, three months now only. So as Eric already mentioned, it's so now we are gathering more and more data um, and we know more and more about this virus because all these vaccines, sorry, all these vaccines has been approved on a real scheme, one injection, second injection, two weeks after. And now people try in different try to extend the time lag phase between the injection. So we try more and more um, and try to find the optimal, um, optim optimal, I would say, um, optimal um, injection and protocol um, for the good of people, of course, but also because sometimes, as we know, we lack of vaccine sometimes. So there is many discussion going on to, uh, to improve this uh, injection process. So we have also inactivated vaccine, of course, um, the Chinese uh, vaccine are leading uh, with some inactivated vaccine. We have some adenovirus uh, from AstraZeneca and Johnson and Johnson with one injection now. And also the, we will have some adenovirus from China as well, the CanSino. And currently, so the recent vaccines that will come soon to the market probably are the protein vaccine that uh, there is no yet. Um, we will have also improvement in the RNA vaccine with CureVac because they have a vaccine that you can keep at four degree. So different vaccine will arrive. It, some of them will be similar strategy to what was accepted, but a different protocol. Uh, and some will be also improved vaccine in terms of um, logistic, like a CureVac vaccine. Um, and there is some DNA vaccine also that are in the process in India, um, especially. Uh, there is a phase three on the DNA vaccine. And this is the same. It's very interesting because there is no DNA vaccine yet for human. So it will be also a big improvement. Uh, here it's many the, the leading, I would say, company and that are for the vaccine. And I just want to stress that we only have less than three months. For example, for Pfizer, it's when three months it's under approved. And Pfizer already prepare a next generation of vaccine. And we say they modify the vaccine, they will modify the sequence that in match uh, like the UK strain that it should protect better against the UK strain and probably against some Brazilian variant also. So it's quite amazing also that three months later, they already prepare the next generation of the vaccine to improve the protection of people. Um, to to uh, yeah to finish quickly I I just want to 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 give some thought so I want to talk about protection and reinfection and the main problem with this vaccine is not that it is not sterilizing so it's still possible to be infected if, even if you are vaccinated but of course you you will uh, you will not become sick hardly sick so you are protected from to going from hospital but you're probably you will have infection. And what is interesting in some experiments, we find that in fact, people uh, have some virus replication on the upper respiratory tract, but in the leg, there is almost no infection in the leg anymore. So because of this, you can still transmit the virus uh, in theory, because you will have virus on your nose, but you have to, to, to know that this virus might be complex to antibody. And so maybe the titer will be very low. So the risk of transmission is still also low. Um, this we need more study, but probably in Israel we will have some very good data from Israel. We will see the virus still um, circulate or not, or if it's after vaccination, everything will stop. So it will be very important to follow this country. Um, I want to so to say um, we have to be careful because now as there will be less and less cases, of course, also the development might be slower and slower. Because as I said, when you want to do a phase three, 
you need a lot of people. And unfortunately, if, hopefully for us, I would say there will be, we hope, less and less people infected. That the drawback of this is that you will have less patients to test the vaccine. So, um, for example, there is a vaccine that is based, a vector vaccine that is based on vesicular stomatitis viruses. And this virus has been derived to make a vaccine. And this is the Ebola vaccine that worked very, very well. So and some, some companies so try to develop this strategy. One company in Israel, unfortunately, because now there is almost no case in Israel, so they cannot really make clinical try on this vaccine. And Merck had developed also this vaccine, but unfortunately, they, they abandoned it because they said it was not efficient enough. So I'm still very curious because I really trust this vaccine should be good, but I, I'm still surprised that Merck stopped uh, this vaccine, and uh, I would have loved to see another um, company try to do this. Uh, this is also so quickly well, the, the result of the clinical vaccine in Israel. So this is the proportion of people above 65 years old hospitalized. And you can see after 10 days after the vaccination, you have a huge drop uh, in people of above 65 years old going to hospital. So it just shows how it works very, very well. And now, as I said, we will have more data about the circulation of the virus. Um, so I want to finish by really positive messages also, because I think so finally, well, we, we know there is variation, but in, I say the, the virus is qualified as stable. It's not like HIV um, or flu that are very, um, that can very quickly develop mutation. Here we have mutation, of course, but we deal with, with million and million of cases. And virus is really like, the, like follow completely the Darwin theory. So the more immunization, the more vaccinated people, the more people taking antibody, the more uh, mutation you will have. It's a, you have a selection pressure. Mm -hmm. So you, we don't have to be afraid about having mutation because it is, it is not, yeah, this is a life uh, theory. I mean, it's a Darwin theory. So of course, uh, we will have mutation, but we can, we should focus. We know some company can easily make some new vaccine strain like Pfizer, Moderna, they can really quickly change. So it should be able to generate immunities that have a broader spectrum. And this is what we want to reach during the next year. So we say it will not be reached in one year, of course. Um, validation of future technology, so RNA, and RNA seems like so far, Everything, all the, the light are green and it's ideal vaccine. It works in all people, no adjuvant. You can adapt to new strains. So hopefully we validated this strategy and it will be very helpful for the future. And we confirm some modern technology as well, like adeno, um, adenovirus. So all this should help. We should be optimistic because of course in the future we will have probably other emerging disease. Uh, there is also no new consortia now that are pushing well one health prison strategy preparedness program now and we want to know more about emerging virus and hopefully we will have the tool to answer this virus um, so i just want to end this this presentation by just presenting a few pictures of my lab um, during the year the year so we started to work very hard in january and hopefully i will say around april may we had already some good results and good strategies so and after I will say Academic Lab finished the job and it was the company to reach, um, to, to take the next step. And this is where Eric said, it was really a big, big work in the basic science, development of vaccines and it go to industry. It was a big challenge for industry to produce huge quantity of vaccine, to make all this clinical try. And all this was really successful in one year. So um, even if it is a lot of pain and difficulties in the world, it's really amazing and to see this and we can be optimistic that we will succeed to eradicate this virus i hope thank you eric Sorry. thank you very much uh, dimitri it was a great presentation uh, and we also admire people in the middle of your uh, slideshow with uh, with a kick i mean we can see there was uh, a, a lot of energy during the, the development of these uh, 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 product. I keep one uh, word in mind, vaccine, vaccine, and vaccine. So uh, let us now move to uh, the presentation of uh, Dr. John, of, uh, of Richard, if you allow me to use your first name. Uh, you are going to explain us, uh, at least uh, to share with us, uh, how to move to 
commercial vaccines beyond what the government uh, can can supply. So, Richard, what uh, do you think, and what do you recommend? Yeah. So, um, thank you very much, Eric, and and thank you, Dimitri. Um, I, I, you know, perhaps, um, and also in the interest of time, um, I'll, I'll just very quickly, um, you know, frame uh, international SOS. We are uh, the world's leading medical services and uh, security provider. Um, we, we, we currently employ um, uh, worldwide uh, about 5,200 medical professionals. And we have, a, we truly have a global footprint. Um, I personally, I've been based in, in Jakarta, Indonesia for um, the last um, seven years. And, and principally my job is to take all the things that uh, Professor Dimitri just showed us specifically with relation to this virus and make this um, very crowded space and this very, very um, a laminated uh, 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 amount of information that we uh, that we have coming at us daily. I mean, you, you, you just saw the number of vaccines that are available. To translate this into um, into 101 for, for our clients and for our members. So what, what I'd like to share with you is, um, and, and, and by the way, so I'm, so I'm not a scientist, I'm a, I'm a medical professional and, and you know, I, I defer to the scientists to tell me how this works and, and, and how well this will work. Um, and what I do and what uh, my colleagues uh, do is we help our clients to understand how do we take this and how do we now get shots in arms? I think we all understand that that is, um, as Eric said, that's what we're aiming for. Um, so Eric, and just lastly, just thank you very much for the opportunity to share this um, with everybody in the call. Next slide, please. So um, I, I quickly wanted to, to step through um, how we approach this, um, this specifically um, you know, looking at, at workforces, looking at, and, and, and I'm sure that, that we have um, people who join this presentation who would no doubt sit around tables um, on a daily basis and deal with um, what's loosely labeled as vaccine hesitancy, um, who have asked themselves the question, you know, how do you socialize this? You know, how much information do you give your workforce? How do you, how do you plan to roll this out? Or do you just wait for the governments to do this? Um, you know, it's very much about navigating um, through this this pandemic, navigating all the um, all the information that's uh, that's being pushed at us um, on a daily basis. You know, a lot of it is obviously solid information. Some of it, you know, not so true. And you know, I on a daily basis have uh, have a debate in my own house about um, you know what what the social media sends out with um, you know reported microchips and, and, and all kinds of, 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 of rather um, interesting and amusing things that um, that would circulate. So, so no doubt all of us face, uh, face these, um, these same challenges. Um, you know, up till now, um, and, and I, I quickly want to share with you also, obviously what we had to do was, was to mitigate, to, to understand how uh, we could best, um, you know, certainly in terms of our workforces, how we could best uh, help to get companies back to, to operations, how we could get people back into employment and, and, and what the testing, um, isolation and quarantine strategies for, uh, for these various clients look like. I mean, for example, in the offshore space, offshore environment um, and for mining uh, clients, this is the, 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 these are areas that, that, that we've turned our support into, um, I would say, you know, obviously industry leading. Uh, where people rely on us to try and keep disease from uh, from these closed environments, and uh, if and when it it, it does find its way <clears throat> through this the Swiss cheese model, how best to very quickly deal with it. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, we talk about mobility. We talk about mobility because uh, we understand the vaccines are here. Um, Eric, just move to the next slide, please. And and so this is the, the, the this is this is what I'd like to to perhaps just position for you. Um, you know, I, I I'd like to show you how we we um you know we we basically categorize our approach into three broad categories, with an aim to to give our clients. As we understand, you know, they, they would like to know exactly what uh, what Professor Dimitri showed you. 
where are the vaccines at? You know, what's the status? Um, how how can we avail ourselves of the vaccine? You know, in an environment where where of course um, much of this, if not everything, is is very much controlled by governments. They invested heavily into the development of of these vaccines. And not surprising that uh, private enterprise, you know, we've got sharp elbows. We're pushing our way forward. But of course, we we we, we understand that there's a time frame when uh, when this would come our way. Nevertheless, this for us is obviously the time to to understand what uh, what the strategy should be. To look at 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 the at, at the, the the strategies that our corporate clients have. Understand that these will vary. You know, um, in, in some jurisdictions, uh, vaccinations will be mandated. And most of the world, not so. And so, a, a lot of education would, of course, drive the uptake here. Um, uh, we, we also understand that with the different vaccines, you know, the WHO and the SRA would, uh, would, would, would certainly sign off on, on a number of vaccines. But we also understand that, you know, almost half the world would, would perhaps not fall initially, um, you know, comfortably under, under the SRA umbrella. And, um, and, and how, how do we help our clients to navigate that, to understand the, the time frame of when these are available? And then also start with some thought leadership about, so now I've got my vaccines, I've been vaccinated, what do I do now? How do I, how do I travel? How does this help my mobility? How can, how can we international SOS help um, our clients to, uh, you know, to get back to work, to have the entries into countries, which, um, you know, to now is, is, is perhaps one of the most difficult things to do. Um, yeah, so, so the, the, these are the three, uh, the, the, the three basic areas. Um, so, so information and, and intelligence. I mean, you know, it, it, it is all, uh, it, it, it's all about, you know, tell people what you're going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you told them. You know, there the, the, the really is no, is no substitute for ongoing accurate um, information. And of course, exactly what everybody will tell you is we don't have all the answers. This is what we know today. But we'll come back and we'll tell people. So for international SOS, um, you know, we have 26 um, assistance centers around the world, and these are 24/7, uh, um, very uh, strategically placed centers. Obviously, it comes with all the language capability, and this is what we rely on to help design for our uh, domestic and international travelers. Um, you know, the, the information packages. Now we find ourselves um, in, in, in the area where we're talking about uh, vaccination strategies. Um, yeah, thanks, Eric. Um, so so this, is, this is just a very quick slide to show what some of our information um, and advice packages look like. Um, in the interest of time, let's just skip through the next slide, please, um, Eric. Thanks. So as I said, the, the vaccination strategy, this is, this is all about advisory services. Uh, you know, we, we are inundated. I am inundated um, on a daily and weekly basis uh, with corporates reaching out saying, how can you help us? You know, how can you help us plan to, uh, to vaccinate um, our, our, our staff? I mean, it, it truly is, um, uh, you know, a like, like a military operation. You know, we, 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 we have to, I mean, for example, you know, you, 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 you don't appreciate necessarily just how much BPE is required to vaccinate, um, you know, a, a population of 5,000 people. And equally, uh, once, once, once we crunch the numbers, it's incredible to imagine the amount of, of medical waste that you generate. And of course, we have to help our clients then um, in this private space to deal with all of the, um, for example, you know, the, the, the PPE supplies, make sure that the planning is there, make sure that the training is there, make sure that the, uh, that, that the logistics, especially around the cold chain, and then of course, the, the, uh, the last part of the vaccine delivery strategy for us is about the, uh, uh, you know, what now? So, so now I've got my shots in, in my arm, how do I now, how does this help me to be more mobile? So next slide, please. Uh, and, and the next one, please. Thanks very much. So yeah, so, so just really quickly, so our vaccination, vaccination and, um, uh, and our intelligence and advice in action. Yes, um, I mean, I'm not gonna spend much time on this. I'm sure we can, we can perhaps touch on, on some case studies when we um, do the, um, the question and answers. But, um, but, but, and again, you know, it, it is all about compliance. 
Um, you know, it, it is all about um, understanding why people um, uh, would be perhaps uh, hesitant, um, uh, you know, in taking vaccines, making sure that our screening of individuals in terms of exclusion criteria, that this is, this is just, that this is thorough, and that we can, we can help our clients to socialize to, to their staff. For example, if you have a, if you have a pregnant employee, how do you plan to, to, to get shots in the arms there? You know, the, the, these are the, the, the real day-to-day -day, uh, challenges that we already are now seeing. Next slide, please, Eric. And the next one, please. So, so I, I I want to perhaps just get to to the um, to, to, to the to the ultimate question, which is, um, and I'm sure um, all of you are, are wrestling with um, with what does ultimately um, a vaccine passport look like? You know, is is there going to be um, just the one? Is there going to be several? I mean, certainly in 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 the space that we operate in. Uh, we international SOS, we have, uh, we, we have a, 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 a COVID a pass, which um, uh, is, is, is being rolled out. So, so our, our key clients at the moment would be airlines. And of course, the, this all speaks to mobility. But it's not just for international travelers, it's also for national travelers. But understanding that, that, of course, testing is not going to go away. I mean, our horizon internally Certainly, um, we have to scroll that beyond uh, 12 months to understand that, you know, how do we help our clients to maintain safe, healthy work environments? And this is where the digital platforms obviously uh, come front and center and will play a huge part in, uh, in, in, in how uh, the vaccine strategies um, ultimately, you know, the end to end operationalization of this, how that will be, um, uh, will, will be successful. Um, thanks, Eric. I, I, I'm going to stop there. I think um, in the interest of time, we'll, we'll probably get through some specific questions. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Richard. And uh, it was a comprehensive uh, presentation, but we are still waiting for the actual uh, uh, specific cases, I'm sure. But uh, I already have a few questions. Uh, so, gentlemen, be ready because we don't have much time and we would like to answer as many as we can. I have one for you on the science side, uh, uh, Dimitri. Uh, what is the uh, uh, impact of uh, immunosuppressant drugs uh, on taking, uh, especially uh, uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines? I have also the same question about nutrition, uh, nutrition deficient subjects. Uh, what, 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 uh, what are your views on, uh, on this? Uh, concerning immunodeficient people, yeah, of course, um, as the immunity is much reduced, they will not answer the, bar the vaccine, unfortunately, very well. Um, so they, will, they might develop no or very, very little immunity, and uh, they will probably not be protected. So, uh, yeah, it's a big problem for these, these people. So there is alternative um, treatment, like injection of a monoclonal antibody that has been provided to immunodeficient people. Uh, and it can cure people like this, but vaccine is probably not the, the best strategy for them. And in terms of um, nutrition connection and vaccination, I will say there is not so many studies, I, I guess. Um, there is many, many studies now on the microbiota and see influence of microbiota on immune response, on different diseases. But um, I, I did not really see uh, too many studies on vaccination and microbiota, but um, I, I might have missed some paper. It's, a, it's an interesting question, but probably it's not addressed so, so far. All right, thank you. Thank you also for having a short and sharp uh, answers. I continue with you, uh, uh, Dimitri. Uh, because we have a lot of friends uh, from uh, India tonight. So there, there are a lot of discussion uh, with regards to the time between uh, what should be between the first and the second shot. And I understand in India, it's the Oxford Zeneca uh, vaccine. So what uh, would you recommend here? Can we just play with it and, and along with it? I mean, what, what, what is your view on the time between the two shots? Um, the time initially it was set up to two weeks and then after go to four weeks and uh, there is a recent study in fact that even uh, talk about I think two months a delay between the two shots uh, from UK and uh, the result was quite stable I would say it's not so big big difference if we delay the, the second shot so 
so far we say the, the first stroke seems still more important than the, the, the boost, but the boost will be probably very important to fight, I would say, the, the different variants and the different mutants. And as you said earlier, there are still studies on, on the duration. Ah, people are mm. trying to optimize that, if I understand right. Mm. We, we continue, Dimitri. What is the role of nutrients in the management of COVID-19 until vaccination to all is available? Sorry, what is the role? Uh, it's uh, written in the chat. What is the role of nutrients in the management of uh, COVID-19 until vaccination to all is available? I guess it's, uh, can we use some uh, uh, food, spe special foods in order to uh, reduce or limit the, the risk of the, of, the, of, the, of the disease? I have no idea, I will say. Um, in China, we know that they tested a lot of traditional medicine and probably in different countries as well. Uh, they selected in China, I know they selected like five different compounds uh, that might have a little effect. Um, but um, yeah, there is, well, there is really nothing, uh, I didn't see anything very clear in the, in the literature. Yeah. There is no scientific literature on that, but I agree with you. Uh, probably India, but also China have done a lot on, yeah. on, uh, on, uh, on TCM. Yeah, yeah. I have another question here on my, uh, on my personal chat. Efficacy on all age groups. Uh, what, what is your view on uh, all the very segmented uh, approach that are uh, uh, used by various countries? I can see, for example, I'm French, so uh, we, we both are French, so the, the French government is using uh, uh, vaccination strategy and taking care of some part of the, of the population and then uh, going down in terms of risk. While in China, uh, where you are living and I'm living, so we all see that there is a totally different vaccination strategy where they start, in fact, from people frontline. So how do you see this uh, uh, impact of the uh, age uh, groups? Does it really matter from a vaccination point of view? Or is it only a, a, a pure uh, healthcare uh, strategy, public health uh, strategy? I think it's a political and probably healthcare strategy. Uh, in, in most countries, we want to, to reduce the burden on hospitals. So what we want to treat first is uh, the risk to see a lot of elderly people coming to hospitals. So we will vaccinate them first. Uh, in some other countries, uh, we, we want to, to to, what we say, to slow down the circulation of the virus. And when you want to slow down circulation of the virus, then you might vaccinate younger population, people that would go out usually, or well, now no one can really go out, but uh, young people and people worker as well. So it really depends. But in most countries, we say the people take the priority to, to, yeah, to, 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 to free the hospital. So usually old people are more, uh, the focus of vaccine and, and the efficiency so far is quite it's quite good I would say compared usually we always say the flu vaccine is not working very well for all people but in this case the, the vaccine and the new new technology used are much better than the flu vaccine yeah. it's maybe also connected as I said to the fact that the virus may be more stable for now so, so to summarize for someone that is not a scientist like me uh, <laughs> take a vaccine whatever it is you have one, get it. That's yeah. my, my, my bottom line. And maybe, uh, Dr. Jones, you don't hesitate huh, also to, uh, to yeah, see, I have a question for you, uh, uh, Richard, and, and maybe uh, Dimitri also uh, jump in huh, if, you, if you want. It looks like here, uh, coming from Austria, uh, a lot of people here have uh, uh, doubt about uh, what the government is saying, and some doctors in Austria are uh, uh, very slow in, uh, in taking vaccine. As, as French, I also understand that even the French Ministry of Health uh, has to write to doctors to tell them, please take uh, your vaccine. So what wh wh do you take from that? Uh, so so perhaps I'll, so, thanks there. Two sentences. May I just, may, may I just take one? Huh? Sure, may I just take one, one step back and, and, and say, look, I, I, and I don't have the, the reference um, in front of me, but I do know that uh, that was, and, and it was not yet peer reviewed, that there was a, uh, an interesting paper on the role, potential role of vitamin D in um, in, in in COVID, right? So, so I I, I do think that it's it's um, it's it's a very valid um, question, and I do think that uh, that as 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 we step through this more and more as clinicians, we will no doubt um, link more um, uh, you know more of these chronic uh, uh, deficiencies with uh, bad medical outcomes. Um, so, so just just wanted to, to perhaps add that. Uh, what can I tell you? 
doctors are uh, the, the, the doctors are perhaps um, are perhaps the, the the most stubborn group of people. Um, you know, if you if you ask two doctors, you get three opinions. So um, I yes, I I, I have no, <laughs> I, I I I don't have the I I don't have the magic answer why doctors are are are, are hesitating. For me, honestly, what you just touched on there. The first shot I can get, I'll take. Um, you know, I, I, I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share with you that last year I, um, you know, I, I, I contracted um, uh, COVID and uh, spent, you know, two weeks in my in my home, feeling particularly sorry for myself, <clears throat> and um, you know, not, not, nothing really bad. But you know, uh, and, and I'm a big advocate that regardless of of, of having gone through that. I'm still very keen to line up and get a shot in my arm. So I, I, I really encourage my colleagues to do the same. I, I honestly um, uh, couldn't answer that in a different way. Thanks. But I'm, sure, I'm sure the French and the Austrian uh, people in the room will, uh, will be very happy to hear that. A very <laughs> practical question to you, uh, uh, Richard. Indonesia, you are going to get, I guess, one of the American uh, uh, um, vaccines, but also the Chinese one, because I remember if it is Sinovac yes. who got uh, authorization uh, in, uh, yes. in your country. Mm -hmm. So which one yes. are you going to take? So, so, so just, just very quickly, the, the, the government, uh, we, we, we have two streams. We have the government stream, which, which basically is currently relying on Sinovac. Um, we, we have been told that um, the, the private uh, uh, stream, if you will, will get Sinopharm, will get Moderna, and in time, Johnson & Johnson. Sinopharm will be first, and as soon as, as, soon as I can, I'm going to line up and get Sinopharm. I understand the technology. Um, I, mean, I mean, gosh, it's been around forever. Uh, and honestly, unless somebody changed it for, uh, for swamp water, it, it really should do what it says on the, what it says on, on, on the tin. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely... Um, yeah, I will. I mean, if, if if and when we speak again, I'll give you feedback. I'll tell you exactly how it's going. You, you By the way, we, we we are already vaccinating our own uh, medical staff, of course, as, as as you'd expect around the world. And um, you know, I I've got four hundred of my staff in Indonesia who've gone through this, and you know, we've closely monitored side effects and and absolutely nothing to report back to you. Just nothing negative to report back. Good. And just as a summary, in fact, in Indonesia, you have a government stream is Sinovac, which is a Chinese uh, vaccine. And if it is private, the number one choice is Sinopharm, which is also a Chinese one. Chinese, yeah. So, so the first one that will arrive will be Sinopharm, then Moderna, yeah. and then J J J Johnson & Johnson after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. very, very interesting. Uh, you, you jump in, uh, Dimitri, if you, if you want. But then I have the next question on, on, on this, which, which is because for me, again, as a non-scientist uh, part of the, of the discussion uh, today, uh, for me, the real use of the vaccines will be also to allow mobility uh, for, uh, for people. So it's a kind of mobility. And this, uh, we will need the, the vaccine pass in order to, uh, to prove it. So do you have an idea and, and, and view on how it should be done? Because if I am in China, I get a, a Chinese uh, a vaccine and uh, some people are in Europe and get a vaccine there. And how, if there is no mutual recognition, uh, how will this work? Can you give us some, some, some view or guess? I don't know. Richard? Yeah, sure. Uh, look, uh, to, to me, it's it, it's absolutely straightforward. Um, we, we we and we've seen some of these platforms already. As I said, you know, our company have developed um, our own uh, a version. It's called AOK Pass, and, and and essentially what 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 it relies on is that you know you would get your your your, your vaccine, but also your, your your test, whether this is an antigen or a PCR test, from from our accredited um, providers. So, so these are people that that we would have visibility of. So it's not uh, it, it it's not something that you can buy on uh, on the internet with a few clicks. Um, this gets uploaded into into this digital passport, which you know basically supports all the all, all the different phone platforms, and and it generates a QR code. And so obviously you need to now have an end to end relationship where you can just show this, and and without having to 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 thumb through reams of paper, the uh, uh, you know the the, the barrier. To wherever you're entry, entering into, we we'll just use a scanner. Uh, look, uh, all along throughout this 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 pandemic, I, I've said the worst thing for a traveler, you know, for somebody who wants mobility, is to stand in front of an official who has an opinion, you know, because 
no doubt they will tell you what their opinion is and and the sooner we can take you know that uh that out of the equation and standardize um and, and not have people struggle with um you know with with having uh, people to 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 uh, translate uh, their PCR certificates because the the um, you know the the, the borders or, or immigration um, you know demand it in, in, in a certain format. It, it has to become this standard platform. Um, exactly what what Professor Dimitri said. You know we are in 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 in, in my view a few um, a few booster shots away from from um, you know, not using the e-word, eradicating this, but at least allowing you know, us to build that herd immunity to get back to mobility and, and, and life, which kind of resembles something um, that we remembered from before. In order to, to facilitate that, it has to, be, it has to be a digital platform. I mean, that's, uh, that's the bottom. So, so my, my takeaway is that, in fact, this QR code is going to be sustained or, or, or yes. rely on two information. One, the shot, the vaccine yeah. shot, Plus a PCR uh, test, uh, you need both in Perhaps. order to, to, to control. You know, you know, Eric, and, and you, you, you may even imagine that that, that uh, people would would perhaps also challenge um, to see that you've mounted antibodies. So, so in some jurisdictions, no doubt, when you've gotten your shots. So, not just for curiosity, but I'm sure that some jurisdictions would actually, um, you know, ask to to be shown that, that 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 you have mounted an antibody response following your your, your vaccinations. The interesting part um, it here is that you, you can imagine that that we will have, uh, you know, a paperless future. So why not just link all your vaccines to this, your, your, your annual flu shot? Why not just link your, your yellow fever uh, vaccination to the same platform? I mean, this makes a, a lot of sense. And, and I honestly think this is, this is what, as we all say, this is what this disease has accelerated for us. You know, it was always coming, but, but here we are. We, you see, we leapfrogged so many years. And so this this is our new horizon. Is all digital. I understand, but but it's for me where uh, global uh, standardization and communication should be uh, good here, and uh, probably WHO should uh, issue some kind of format that everybody would follow, because if so, we let yeah. if we let all jurisdictions to do it, we, it yeah. will be a little bit messy. Let us say like that. I, I completely agree time. with you. I completely agree with you, especially perhaps uh, around some of the really important diseases uh, like polio, like yellow fever. Um, and, and I know that, that the WHO are looking currently and they're testing not just one, but a number of these digital platforms to, to with a view to put their stamp on it. And, and, and I truly agree with you. That is something we should encourage. You know, uh, competition is always good. I think I think it's very healthy. It needs to be out there. But we couldn't have you know, one platform for every country. What a mess. Uh, I, I agree, I, I agree yeah. uh, with you. In terms of timing, wh what timing do you have in mind? I mean, waiting, for example, for all the key jurisdictions to be ready. I mean, Europe, they are already having some, some model and so. So is it a matter of one or two months? Well, how do you see that? So, because, yeah. uh, in, in, in Singapore, this is an operational model already. Um, for international travel, it's already uh, an operational model. Uh, in Indonesia, where I am, you know, the, the government already, they, for the domestic travel, we already have an, an internal uh, uh, platform. You know, it's, it's not entirely three-dimensional, it's, you know, two and a half dimensional, but we're getting there, you know, and it's, it's, it's sort of a, it's a work in progress. And, 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 and all our input is, is always, you know, trying to be, you know, positive uh, feedback rather than criticism. As I said, this this is what the, our future looks like, regardless of, of of how we slice or dice this. It's paperless, um, and it and it is a matter of months away because we're going to get by the middle of this year massive amounts of shots in arms. And you you know this. It's the writing. So what Professor Dimitri showed there. You know, you saw the the list of vaccines that are going to hit our our shelves uh, from June onwards. It, it, it is just going to become that much easier. And so the very good news of the, 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 your thinking and, and your, uh, your feedback tonight is that, in fact, we are not going to wait for mutual recognition between countries because there is politics, there is a lot of things yeah. we, we can see. Huh? Some countries are using vaccines in order to do their own promotion and so, so it, 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 it triggers a lot of things. So here, in fact, each country will be in charge of his own jurisdictions, doing his own website. Hopefully there is some, some kind of uh, bridge or... Uh, common standard, but then it means that, in fact, every country is in charge of its own uh, people, which in a way does not, does, not, does not need the mutual recognition, which will take time, I guess. No? True. 
and I think I think the the, the 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 clever the clever people, of course, would reach out to um, to Ayata and 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 some of these, you know, supranational uh, bodies who yeah. who you know who allow us to to be mobile, and 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 have that recognized. So so I'm guessing it'll be like a club. You there'll be a barrier to entry. Show us that this is robust. Show us that there's thinking that goes into this. That you have some quality control, and then you can you can upload your QR system into our club. That's that's very much how I see this work, and, uh, and, and you know I very encourage good. that. By the way, time is running, and uh, the the, um, the deal with our participant is that we finish sharp. So I still have one question that is very important. I can see uh, still a lot of questions on the on the chat. We will not be able to answer, and some of them are really. Uh, question you should ask your own doctor. Uh, remember, all this is public information. We are very happy to share it with you, but at the end, what matters is your relation with your own uh, doctor. So here, uh, last question for both of you gentlemen. When do you think that the countries will be in position to leave their controls to travel? Alors maybe you are not able to tell us which day, which, which month, but maybe you can tell us uh, what will be the preconditions uh, needed uh, in order to uh, open up the, the countries. Who starts? Dimitri or Richard? Uh, I think well, Richard would have maybe more element, but um, may I would just say that for China, for example, we know the problem in China is that we are immune naive completely. So, of course, uh, as long as the vaccination cannot reach really a certain level, around 60%, 70%, it would be difficult to open the country, I think, because they are very, they don't want to have circulation of the virus at all here. So, um, yeah, so as China deal a lot to open the border, but it will be very, very complicated for them because uh, they might have some little outbreak from place to place uh, for a little while. But, so, yeah, so, so to put numbers, huh, we, are, we are all in a, in, in a way in the, in the business. So we are talking about vaccinating 600, 700 million people before being able to open the door. Uh, because uh, the closing, the closed door uh, policy has its advantage, and China is, is well protected, but the opening up would be very difficult for China. It is your yeah. guess, huh, Dimitri. Yeah, because Richard? even if people get a, a vaccine and then a test, uh, still there will be little probably problem from time to time, and well, we cannot exclude some little outbreak uh, from time to time. Mm -hmm. So let's see. <laughs> Understood. Richard, Sorry. last, last word so, for you. So yeah, last last thoughts from my side, Eric. Look, the, 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 there's tension between um, you know not overburdening the, the, the healthcare systems worldwide, and, and the absolute need for commerce to uh, to 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 start rolling again, and and we, we see this play out in, in Southeast Asia. So um, you know, countries like Cambodia um, are, are talking about. Um, allowing people uh, who, who are fully vaccinated, who can, who can demonstrate that they that they did get um, whatever the full course um, of vaccines look like, um, to come into the country and and then drastically shorten the 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 amount of time that they that they expect them to stay in um, to stay in isolation. You know, we we see we, we see that 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 tension. Um, you know, starting everywhere to roll back um, even 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 the amount of time that close contacts are now uh, being re uh, required to 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 self isolate or isolate, um, and 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 that will continue. You know, uh, here is Singapore and, and and a lot of these um, very proactive countries will become vaccine destinations. We you know we we know that uh, people will fly in there and they will you know. Um, go in a comfortable lounge, get a shot in the arm, get a you know glass of orange juice or whatever it is, do your shopping, and fly back to wherever you go. People are willing to invest in this because I think you know it, it's not just the the, the rotational um, employees who are who are screaming for mobility. I I, I, I think I think that's that's pretty much throughout. Everybody wants to have a solution. Sure, but uh, in the case for the, for example in uh, in Singapore. When, when do you think they are going to uh, open again the, the door to international travels and uh, reduce the restrictions and so on? Gosh, yeah, no, that's that crystal ball is very murky. Um, so, so look, at the moment, we, we can get patients into Singapore, and we can get, uh, uh, you know, but it, it's still under the and under the uh, under the COVID rules. Um, I, I think you know, uh, countries like Singapore are, are incredibly. Um, uh, scared almost in a sense i imagine to uh you know to get back to 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 being out of control so um i i, I kind of think you know if you look to countries for example like mongolia 
where they've had this complete lockdown strategy and so now they're rolling out um, vaccines. Um, at the moment, they have perhaps um, 3,000 cases in the country with, uh, with a very, very low number of deaths. When they did this initially, everybody said, gosh, that's a, you know, that's, that, that's a unique strategy. Um, but, you know, they, they started giving, you know, massive amounts of shots in arms. So this may just work. And so very quickly, you could, you could imagine that Mongolia could actually open up their, um, you know, their borders to tourism and, and, and to some of the trade that they've been, they, they've been lacking. That, I think, is, is going to be, um, you know, perhaps what we'll see in Southeast Asia. It'll start in some of the smaller countries and then, you know, um, obviously uh, the momentum would take it to others. Thanks, Eric. Dimitri, no? No, no, right. just... <laughs> All right. All right. No, no, I, I thought you wanted to say something. So, uh, yeah. Mia, we have the, the last word. Thank you very much to uh, both of you uh, for your, your time and, uh, and energy and also sharing, as everybody understands, it's a, a little bit of guess. Huh? I mean, there's a lot of hard fact science, but there's also a lot of things we, we still need to be very humble and to uh, continue to, uh, to, to monitor. Uh, but there are... Uh, really uh, hope uh, at the end of the tunnel. So thank you very much uh, for both of you uh, for sharing that and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.